Hey everybody and welcome to episode 94 of Design Cinema. This is Feng Zhu speaking and uh, as you notice we are back in real time because I went back and uh, watched episode 93 and noticed the episode just felt way too rushed. It went by super fast. I think I was speaking kind of very quickly to try to fit it within a 20 minute timeline. So I thought, you know, that's not going to really help anybody, uh, especially for all the students who are watching these episodes. The content wasn't that informative, and that kind of defeats the purpose of design cinema. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go back and do it the old school way. This, this kind of format takes a lot more time to do, but I think the content is the key. So what I'm going to do today is record all this in real time, uh, pretend we are in a classroom situation, and we're going to figure this stuff out all in real time. So with that said, that means there's gonna be my imperfections, my office is still being worked on, so you might hear all sorts of random noises, uh, phones being wrong and stuff, because I'm in an office, I'm not in a uh, you know, isolated room, this is just my office. So that's a heads up, so there might be drilling, they're doing some construction out in our hallways. Uh, my chair is creaking, because this is not my real chair, as you can see as I move back and forth, it creaks. So anyways, I hope you guys can put up with that, but uh, hopefully the content will be a lot more uh, uh, constructive this time. So let's jump in, episode 94. Uh, I'm gonna try to also record this without too much uh, pausing or editing or anything like that. I think this will feel more real. Uh, and I know most of you guys are watching our students, so that sh hopefully shouldn't be a problem. Um, okay, let's jump in. So 94, what's this about? Form follows function. Well, I'm gonna be in Paris, March 15th to 17th, uh, doing a talk over there with the IM Mag, uh, IA, MAG uh, uh, conference there and I'll be presenting a much longer format of what I'm going to be doing today. Today is just a sneak peek of what it is but what this content is going to do is I decided hey you know I really want to get to at least episode 100 by this year of design cinema otherwise that's ridiculous right but my design cinema I think lately has been kind of random uh, you know, I'm going to be I'm going to be kind of uh, randomly talking here for a second here but the, the episode has been kind of random whoa what did I do my <laughs> with my image here okay uh, and I thought you know using this talk I could give myself a bunch of content that could fill these episodes maybe all the way to the end of the year okay so what I what I'm going to be presenting in Paris is a series of ideas and design things that can help you build your portfolio while having fun doing it. And so today we're going to be just tackling one of the topics I'll be talking about, uh, or at least one of the design directions. The overall talk is about form follows function, which is one of my favorite ways to design. And today we're going to jump in and do this, all right? It's going to be pretty fun. Um, so let me quickly uh, show you guys one of the slides. Well, before I do that, let's let's briefly uh let me get my pen here okay here we go let's just draw around top of this. this is just a psd file here okay let me move the text up and let's let's use this as a whiteboard here let's go to a full screen point okay so everybody let's just treat this as a classroom so anything goes right i'm not, there's gonna be no editing or anything like that i got my coffee over here this time a cold one and let's let's chat this out i have no idea when did i even start this episode <laughs> i have no idea okay okay it's uh it's 11 o'clock a.m here in uh, in singapore so i have no idea how long it's gonna run all right so the the reason why i'm tackling this topic is uh in the last i don't know four or five years or so i'm seeing even more increase in student portfolios that have content that just doesn't have any design in it okay this is now uh, even worse I think with students trying to break into this business because it's so cool obviously from the outside this industry looks really fun but they're not really preparing a portfolio that's going to give them a job they're kind of just drawing concept art of concept art uh, you probably know what I'm talking about now for the pros if you're watching this doesn't affect you guys at all if you're if you're working you have a job you have clients doesn't matter whatever you're doing you're doing fine but this is for those who are trying to break into this business where you may be building your own portfolio and you want the companies to notice you and the thing I notice right now, a lot of portfolio content tends to be, uh, they fall into two different categories, mostly, you know. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking about mostly environments, I'll do characters and creatures eventually, maybe off of this topic as well. But uh, the thing I notice a lot, which you probably may see me uh, mention this before, which is the spiky mountain phenomenon happens quite a bit. Okay, whatever the content is, it's some kind of spiky mountain. The other one will be probably some kind of landscape with towers on it. 
okay like really huge ones with little guys walking around okay now this kind of stuff is fun if you're doing this for fun like a lot of pros we do this too i have a bunch of these in my own portfolio right but they're not meant for me to get a job they're, they're just fun things i do after i come back from doing a project that's you know very grounded and kind of uh, boring in a way so we do these concepts to kind of have fun uh let me just write here right this is uh, mount spiky mountains no mountains Oops, spiky can't spell okay and this is just just towers okay so it could be whatever just towers in the middle of nowhere desert uh, sand mountains snow whatever some kind of uh, spire comes out of it uh, and the other one is just some kind of format of spiky mountain in fact you could google google right now just type in environment concept design and just look at the results i bet you there'll be at least a bunch of towers and spiky mountains in the first search results um now this topic is all fun like i said but is it going to really help you find a job probably not because this kind of content doesn't really show off design it is not hard to do them right and in my past episode i explained why these things are not the hardest thing to do now for a pro they can make these things look fantastic okay because they have all the skills they have all the experience and they're going to make these very inspiring content like this and it's fun i i do them again but for students trying to get into this business, this kind of content, very it's pretty light in terms of design development. It's a one layer pass. So for art directors, look at these, they're like, oh, great. Uh, you're kind of just copying some pro out there where you're a fan of this person. So you're just trying to drive the design of that. But what exactly is this design? I don't know what you're trying to do. It's just a, a huge structure on an alien world and some people are walking next to it or looking at it. Or here's a bunch of spiky mountains on an alien world. How is it going to help my product, especially in video games now in which you're getting a lot of uh, real world content, a lot of historic things, a lot of things that are um, kind of maybe 90 percent based on the real world. Right. Look at all these open world uh, games. They generally take place all on this planet. You know, Rockstar came out with the Red Dead Redemption 2. Right. That's all uh, Western theme. You look at all the uh, Ubisoft games, all the Assassin's Creed, right? They did one what, in Egypt. Now the recently one was in uh, Greece. Uh, all the Far Cries are all in the real world. So there's a lot of need for concept artists that could visualize uh, an entertainment-based world, but that's still fairly grounded to the Earth's history and culture. And that's the kind of stuff that's going to really help your portfolio because you're still going to have fun. We might even do towers in the demos I'll be doing in, in, in the following up uh, in this episode here. But we're going to add just a slight layer of design on top of them. So it's not just a random structure that was born out of exploration. Okay, what I mean by that is exactly like here, right? I could zoom into here and just start putting shapes on top of this thing and give forth or you know birth this design that i really don't know what it is but i could still put textures on it and put all the cool stuff on it to make this into a visually fun looking image but from a deeper design perspective it might not hold anything it, the only thing it serves is that it's a strong visual and for students that's very hard to break in because they're looking at you as a junior designer they want to see what can you bring to the table these things when they're done by a very experienced art directors that's been out for 10 20 years we know that they could do the design work because they have the the, the portfolio I mean they have the resume to prove it they probably worked on a bunch of products so we know that they could go on to a real world project and and give us just medieval Europe for example or uh, a feudal Japan and they're totally okay with it and they do these tower stuff for fun but if the student all you have is this in your portfolio and this spiky mountain really we don't know what you're capable uh, as a designer okay so this episode and hopefully 95 96 and for the next many episodes will be dealing with this topic form follows function now i'm not going to dig too deep into this we're going to explore this as we talk um i haven't prepared any notes in front of me by the way so i'm doing this exactly like uh, i'll be doing if you guys were in my classroom and we're just gonna you guys are gonna see the flow as how i do it and i think that will also make it a lot more believable a lot more real you guys will see me exploring making mistakes um, just going through all the steps a designer needs to go through before they find the uh, the solution for their final product. So, uh, okay, so let's go into one of the slides I'll be presenting over at Paris, which is, uh, let me open this one here. Okay, so function follows form. What I'll be dealing with is I'll be bringing up a lot of different causes that's going to give you a... Uh, a global big goal to solve the problem with in this case in you know, this slide i'm presenting with a natural phenomenon for example weather or geography 
and we have to then come up with a form that solves the problem okay so let me just back up real quick and explain this i'm not going to jump into details but really quickly okay form follows function so the best way to look at this is if you look at the uh the cd players from the 90s where you look at the boom boxes from the 90s right these are products that's designed purely to follow a package that's inside for example a tape recorder has uh motors he has power supplies he has transformers he has speakers and the dis the uh, designer of the the uh, exterior have to make sure all these forms all these uh, functioning things fit inside so the form of the cd player with a boom box is driven a lot by the functionality of what goes inside you fast forward to today and you look at your iPhones or your iMacs, they're almost completely driven by uh, form. So the functions then follows the form. In that case, they want this camera and they want the cameras in there. They will have, there's a smartphone inside, there's video recordings, all these things you can do. But the, the form is very, very simple. This puts a lot of pressure on the engineers to do this work, but that's the, that's the philosophy that we're going into. But for someone learning as a student, uh, in my opinion, if you do form follows function, you could arrive at a much deeper design much, much faster because we can always do magic solutions, right? If you go, hey, this is a power generator. It's just a, uh, let me just sketch here since we have the stuff open. So you have waterfall, okay? And we'd be like, okay, let's just put a box right here. No details, nothing, okay? That's the form I want. And have a little light streak in the middle, okay? That's my design. And I could say this thing could do whatever you want. It could generate power. It's also a space station. It also could broadcast into space, uh, whatever it could do, because all the function is hidden within the box. Okay, just like your iPhone, it could do a million different things, but from the outside, you don't know exactly what it could do. You know, uh, even your friend's iPhone and yours, you guys probably have different uh, apps inside. So the function is kind of hidden. So this kind of stuff is great from a visual point of view, from a product point of view, it's great. But from a portfolio point of view, we're like, okay, your thing could do 10 different things or 20 different things, but we can't visually see it. As opposed to we have a dam and then we have the old traditional way of building in which you have the cement, right? You have this kind of stuff. You have the parts where the water could come out. They generally have little towers on them, right? And then next to this, you have the generator buildings over here. You have the power plants, so they need the little uh, power stations over here on a hill. You have buildings at the bottom, right? This kind of this kind of design, visually, we could see what is happening here. Okay, we could see that this is a some kind of dam. We could see the construction of it. We could see the buildings of it. Visually, it tells a story, and this kind of stuff is good for portfolio. Okay, this kind of stuff really it's. It's hard to tell. If you're a pro, you could pull this off. But for a student, if you put this stuff in your portfolio, man, it's hard for us to know what the heck you are trying to do. Okay. So that's what I mean by function follows. I mean form follows function. We're gonna give ourselves a function. In this case, it's gonna be the weather. Okay, let me just keep an eye on time here. I think we're doing okay. And the function here that we're gonna have to solve is we're in extreme weather. Okay, let's let's talk this through. Let me get a uh, let's get a red pen going here. Dunk. Okay, here we go. So here's the problem. Okay, we're gonna have a snowy background. I'm gonna start this pretty simple. This is a pretty easy exercise. Uh, for the Paris talk, I think I have about, I don't know, 20 or 30 of these kind of, uh, uh, this, these causes that we're gonna have to solve. This being one of the easier ones, okay? Like a snow background. And this way, if you're into doing fun stuff, cool things, towers and so forth, you can still apply those uh, visuals into this design, okay? Sorry about my chair creaking, so I'll get a better chair uh, in here soon. Okay, so what do we have to deal with? We're talking about very cold area, we're in the mountains, it's snowing. What are some of the ways we could fight this, okay? The general way, what I mentioned earlier of, of a tower, right? Yeah, I could just put a tower here, and I'll just do a really quick one, boom. And we could put a tower here, and we could put a tower here, and I could put one back in the background, okay? And then we put some textures on this thing, some textures on this thing. Then we put some guy standing here looking at it. We could call this a piece of concept art. You know, we paint this out and make it all nice. Okay, it's visually cool, but it doesn't tell any kind of story. Today, let's just put one more layer of design on top and figure it out. Okay, so let me delete this one here. Doink. Let's go to red pen. Let's work this out. So, what to deal with cold? Okay. What are some 
of the easiest way to deal with this. Obviously, one of them is going to be heat. Okay, we could use this as a visual hook, maybe. Okay, another one, we could just get out of the way. Get out of the way. My table is shaking. Okay, this could be a solution. Okay, let's name some other ones. Uh, we could use maybe materials. For example, we, uh, we built this uh, very warm uh, uh, building here. That could solve this problem. What I'm trying to get at here is that we're going to use a little bit deeper functional solution to solve the problem uh, that we have here, which is code, um, versus just purely depending on visual. Okay, so let's keep going here. So material is one of them. Okay, what else can we do? Um, okay, and also, just to mention, we're going to keep this somewhat grounded. Now, it doesn't mean it's real. It doesn't mean this is like uh, exactly to what Earth will do. But we're going to use designs that's believable to be built with the technology we have in whatever time period I choose to do this project with. Okay, we're not going to do floating things. We're not going to do extremely sci-fi things because that start to get into the spiky mountain or the space tower phenomenon in which we do have a design, but it's so far removed from technology that we don't know how it's built. And that's not going to help with your portfolio. Okay, let's keep going. So heat, get out of the way, right? Like literally we just, uh, we don't build on the surface. We build somewhere else. Okay, we could deal with materials. What else can we do with here? Let me just think. Um, let me think. So we're cold. We could uh, we could deflect it maybe, but I think that gets a little too sci-fi. Let's just deal with these three. These are some of the easiest ways to deal with, okay? So for this one, I prepared, con you know, as I started getting to reference images, I actually chose this one here, which is let's get out of the way. So let's design this world in which we have these canyons and open areas. So you see, notice here, obviously these are not that big, right? These little gaps in the snow. But what if this world is a little bit bigger in scale, okay? But still keeping it grounded, but they have canyons like this, okay? This kind of canyon. And we could build our buildings within this to get away from the cold and the heavy winds. So I'll start looking into some other references here, like maybe there are steps and so all these buildings are different levels and i thought that's kind of cool but this is still a little bit seen before we've seen you know i chose a japanese motif as well just to keep things fun i'm doing things i like to draw so this is uh, what i like to draw um all these staircases and japanese kind of feudal japan buildings on different levels we've seen all of this before but what else can i do with this by combining the buildings into a canyon and i thought huh, what if we cover all the buildings? What if they're like almost like snakes through a canyon? Okay, they just zigzag, S-curve, all in this canyon. And I thought that's starting to create a pretty nice visual hook. It solves our problem from a functional point of view. And also it gives us a strong visual hook that is gonna be slightly different than simply placing a bunch of Japanese buildings on different levels of stairs, okay, in this canyon. So, okay, that's kind of cool. Let's explore this further. And I want to put some towers in it just for fun, okay? Let's put some towers. Now, this tower is a different time period than these ones over here. They're separated probably by about maybe a thousand years. So this is uh, during World War II, 1940s. But it is built by the Japanese. So I thought, hey, it's kind of cool. This is actually a gun tower. But uh, so these towers, maybe they stay on the outside where they're exposed to the elements. So heavy cement, I like this look. And then where the people live and all their kind of functionalities, we keep it within the valleys and we keep these made out of wood and uh, you know, in somewhat to this design. So I like where this is going. So notice here, I actually put in some photos here. This is not the original uh, reference image. I actually put a little bit of snow here that I cropped from here just to see if the feeling looks correct. Okay, let's keep going here. Let's look at the next uh, slide here. So using that, I thought I need more references. Okay, let's open another uh, layer here okay so i decided to get more cannons now obviously this canyon here is very dry this is grand canyon uh but we're going to be do the, doing this cannons in the snow but i need to get some references okay that's the first thing i'm going to do uh, again i'm doing this exactly how i do designs in the real world i'm going to walk you guys through this and i'll try to slow down i know i'm talking too fast here uh, but uh, follow follow along okay so we have these canyons again another grand canyon that's uh, too hot for this uh, environment but i'm looking at some of the forms here and i also got some references of the buildings of the time period this feudal japan buildings that i'll be referencing as i do my notes okay so we'll be hiding all these in the canyons and we'll be putting the towers on top of the rocks i have one more reference here now let's before i close this one let's look through this so this is a very key uh, let me make my pen bigger here 
This one's a very good one here to grab references from due to its, uh, it has walls, right? Notice I'm getting a lot of references that have these kind of walkways. So we'll, we'll be exploring this. I haven't done any rough sketches for this. I have no idea how we're gonna uh, figure this stuff out, but um, you know we're gonna design as we go here. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at a few more. And the last sheet of reference is here, okay? Just a few more design elements that I'll be needing as I do my notes, okay? The process we'll be doing is gonna be reference images, which you see here, and then we're gonna be doing rough sketches, and we'll probably end the episode today on just a rough. Let's figure the design out, and then in the next one, episode 95, we'll take those roughs and we'll develop it into a further uh, uh, concept art, okay? So the key here is to find the design. Before you jump in into some, you know, uh, some photo bashing production painting, let's get a good idea on paper first. Okay, let me take a, we sit in my chair here because we're about to jump into designing. The hardest part of this entire process is the next step, which is what the heck are we going to draw? All this, all these references are fine. It's great. Every anyone can find these. The internet has everything now. But how do we put this together? How do we make it visually cool and solves a problem? So uh, let's do that. So I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste these guys onto a, a separate thing here. Doink. So I have the references because I don't have two screens as I record this, um, and also I don't I don't want to do two screens otherwise you guys can't see what's happening on the second screen. What I'll do is I just save these onto a separate canvas here. So I have my references available as I work. Now for most designers, you guys have probably second uh, two different screens, so, so you can just throw this on the uh, on the second one, and that solves pretty much this problem. Okay. So that's gonna go there. And this will be my main work area. In fact, I could probably close, close this one right now. Let me just save it. And let's just open a big canvas. Let's just make this big, 5,000, 5,000. And uh, we're gonna draw directly into this. Okay, let me save this. Uh, let me break these recordings into little chunks just in case it crashes, we don't lose the whole thing. All right, so we're back. Let's save these before uh, these things crash on me. Okay, so did we call this ref, woo, ref one, ref one. Save this one as ref two. So put up with me here. We're trying to do this in real time. So not gonna edit any of this out. I think this will be the most, well, it makes it easy for me <laughs> to make these episodes if we don't have to do any, any editing. Okay, ref three. All right, so now we're gonna to to figure all this stuff out. Okay, so let's let's write our goals down here of what we're trying to do. Okay, so we're doing a environmental design. So our goal is we're in a cold environment. Okay, wow, well, why is this not so, how big is my canvas? Okay, it's good enough. All right, cold environment. And we'll be sticking these buildings into some kind of canyon, okay? And I'm doing these notes, just like if you're learning, you guys are students, do this too. I'm showing you guys the exact process we use in the design world. A lot of pros, we could keep this in our heads. They could figure stuff out as they go. But for students, I highly advise you guys to write this stuff down so you don't forget. And you can also solve it on paper. Sometimes just by writing things out, you start to logically see how this design is coming together and you can explore with notes. It's much faster doing that than to jump right into, say you're building this out in 3D or you're already drawing a very tight perspective sketch. You're gonna waste a lot of time not even figuring things out and you're committing say two, three hours just trying to do a perspective drawing, right? So let's do notes first. So we're gonna be putting these in canyons, placement. Okay. Now we are using a kind of feudal Japan, Japanese influence here for our building. So we're gonna keep that. So the time period, we could set this anywhere we want. We could make this if you want it, sci-fi, right? But I'm gonna set it just uh, kind of a fantasy, but kind of grounded world, right? So we don't do too crazy, but I still wanna keep this fun. Uh, these topics are gonna get harder and harder as we go forward. So I'm starting out with the easiest one, which gives us a lot of freedom and we can still put towers, you know, the spiky mountain and towers, we can still put them in. All I'm doing is adding a little bit of a layer of design on top, that's all, okay? So we still keep it fine. So I'm not gonna keep this exactly real, but we're gonna keep the architectural building style pretty much grounded. So we're not gonna depend on floating technologies or crazy metallic things, you know. We're gonna to try to keep this as uh, grounded as possible. Metallic things meaning that it is a giant spire made out of uh, metal or something, okay. So 
that is going to be our problem and then the uh, well the cause and we're going to have to solve the problem so we're going to be using a kind of a, almost a snake like pattern i think for the way the cannon is going to work and i'm going to work this out right now on my own here uh so you can see how i work this stuff out as well so i'm going to be kind of just drawing some rough kind of ideas here so imagine we have a cannon okay like this so let me just sketch this out okay and we're going to be putting these buildings in here somewhere i think in this slot okay let me change the background so we're not it's so bright okay let me do it maybe make it about that okay so these buildings are going to be inside here and they'll be held along the cliffs okay right now i'm just doing really fast sketches to kind of visualize what i'm trying to do here okay maybe they could crisscross this way now this is a good time to mention quick sketches like this these are meant for you Okay, this is another thing we see with students sometimes in which they do sketches that are just kind of too nice. Okay, sketches come down to two different categories the ones you do for yourself and the ones you want to show your clients or put in your portfolio. They're, those sketches are meant to be nice, and then those are the ones that you know you can put on the internet. And people are like, wow, you sketch really great. But I think I probably speak for a lot of designers. We have our own sketchbooks. Okay, the ones just totally crappy, the sketches are only you could understand. That's where you're actually doing the real thinking. And that's what I'm gonna show you guys today with these sketches. I'm not gonna to try to make these nice. I'm just gonna use these to figure things out. And these are really raw, they're for yourself. No one's gonna see them, but this is the most important thing to do. Because if you're restricted by, I have to make these sketches look good, so the, you know, in a portfolio, everyone's gonna be like, wow, your sketch really nice. We can do that later. We can actually reverse sketches, okay? In a portfolio, it doesn't matter. If you have this painting, for example, we do a three production drawings off of these, and we go back and do sketches off of them and say that those are our sketches, that's fine too, because at the end of the day, you created it. But we don't wanna be spending time right now making these beautiful sketches even before we figure out what's happening. So these are things I used to do in a sketchbook or on copy paper, whatever I could find, because they're not meant to be nice. They're just meant to be problem solving okay so something like this and using that I'm like okay let's start to solve this out so let's let's keep going okay let me switch my pen to a slightly thinner one okay uh let's just keep drawing okay let's do a plan profile so let's take a look at my references i'll be looking at this ref here i'll be looking at these little things here and uh let's start with the easiest way to figure this out a, a elevation drawing or a plan drawing which is no perspective, just trying to figure out what this layout is going to be architecturally. Okay, no details, purely figuring stuff out. Okay, do do do. So here's the mountain. Okay, so what's going to happen here? So this mountain is going to be pretty tall. Okay, and notice I just draw on top of notes and whatever. This is meant to be your own sketchbook. Okay, not meant to be nice. Okay, so. These structures, I think they'll look even nicer if they are not exactly perfectly horizontal across the ground. Okay, so these they have some at least some stairs like this. Okay, and the reason why they're building this is to get out the code. Okay, this one might connect to another one. All right, so let me just take a quick look at my my notes here. Or reference images bridges are good these bridges are nice let's see this one's really good because that's exactly sort of what i'm trying to do here just on a larger scale so they have these little beams coming out again i don't need the details right now i just need the sort of the right form that's all i need okay they have these little things on top boom okay this is all for yourself okay and they connect somehow okay now how do they connect to the side of a mountain we'll figure that out Boom. So there's a valley, it gets really cold in here. Up here is all the snow, up, up here it's all cold, snow's blowing, okay, so they're in the valley. Let me switch to thinner pen than that, okay. So we could use wooden struts, will look pretty cool. Let's see if I have good references for that or not. Um, sort of, you can see something over here. Um, here's some over here. So obviously they're holding a lot more weight, so we have to make these a little bit more. Oh, I think I have a tower in here I could reference. Where's my tower? Here it is. Okay. This tower looks a little bit more modern, but it's cl close enough. 
For now, we'll make these uh, legs completely vertical. Later, we can make a slightly have a um, uh, angular, uh, oh, come on, angular uh, leaning like this one here on the tower. But for now, let's keep these sketches simple. Probably gonna need some horizontal ones to hold this as well. So this one will come down, be like this. Okay. Hopefully this will help you guys to see what happens when we design. You know, this will help you figure out a visual that it, it's, it has a slight deeper meaning when someone looks at your design and go, oh, you figured this stuff out. It's not just uh, it's purely built on luck or something. You know? Okay. Again, don't need to be super detailed, just trying to figure this out. So we have a front view of what this thing probably could look like. Let's do a side view. So these beams, I imagine, will be like this. And there are different heights. So some will be like this, some will be over that. Be like this okay so some will be high right because the bottom of this mountain is probably somewhere over here we're in a valley of some kind now you could make an argument like why don't they just build on the floor okay again we're doing a world that's has a slight fantasy twist to it now if we make it completely real they won't even be here you know these people will be like we're not going to live here this is not the place to build homes why will we live out here that's so harsh right but we're trying to make a world here that's visually nice and a little bit grounded so we just have to play with the entertainment value because if we treat this too real then we'll start to deal with like okay this world is completely boring unless we're doing a historic piece uh of feudal japan then that's a whole other story but we're trying to create a fantasy world uh with some grounding okay just keep sketching this out bear with me here this will take a while i have no idea how long this is running for right now i think this episode will probably go to like two hours or something but uh, i want to get these designs to a pretty uh figured out state before we close episode 94 so that way in 95 we start to really draw them out okay now looking at this sketch brings up an issue right and this is why we sketch let me copy and paste it over here is where do they actually live? They cannot live in hallways, right? So I'm gonna have to make homes. Let me just fix this sketch a little bit. Notice, still no perspective. I'm just gonna draw, okay? So I think what it could be is these tunnels directly, or hallways, I guess, covered hallways, directly connects to homes. So they don't really have an outside, right? They'll connect to something like this. So in that case, these buildings could be somewhere over here. And they're on stretch as well. Got another one over here. And this would be on stretch as well. These are roofs from the side view. They're like this. Boink, boink. Do we put windows on them? Um, I guess you could. Maybe the windows are really small. It is cold, but they are in the, in the canyons over here. So something like that. These are rocks. Okay, so they connect directly into these hallways so you never expose really to the outside when you once you're in this world so i guess we'll have a lot of little tunnels and then in between them say at this at this position we will then have houses homes and also uh gathering places for example like halls dojos and that type of thing okay so we'll put that here Bonk. So that will connect. So there'll be a door, internal door that you won't see from the outside. There. Let's just copy and paste this guy. Boom. Put it over here, put another one, oops. Paste another one over here. Okay, we're starting to have something figured out here. So I'm gonna try to figure this out from a plan view now. So right now, all these are elevations or side views. Let's just try side view, let's keep it really simple here side view okay i'm gonna do a plan view which is essentially a top view plan top view okay uh so what's happening here let's just draw a 90 degree one to keep it simple for now what we could use photoshop to uh, twist it for us later okay so that and we have a going this way okay so say over here we have a house I'll be like this. We could have the same house this way. Okay, over here as well. So they're connected like this. We could also have homes that are connected to other homes. Oops, let me merge some of these things. Boink. All right, so they could they could be connected to each other. Some are maybe smaller. 
kind of like this reference that we have over here. Okay, we're trying to create this type of, see all these buildings are all kind of connected together. It's kind of nice. Something like this, okay. And they'll have a canyon. So the canyon will be running something like this, right? Canyons are not 90 degrees, so they're gonna be building according to whatever the rock formation is, okay? And within that, we're gonna have all these walkways. Bonk, that's gonna connect. And this is starting to give us some solutions of visual solutions of what's happening. So we have a bigger picture here. Now I'm looking at these negative spaces. These are kind of like drop-offs. Maybe they could build um, at least some kind of fun plot. Whoop, I haven't saved this yet. So let's save this as two, we'll call this sketches. Okay, maybe we could build some platforms here. That could be maybe a, not a garden. What would they put out here? Because nothing will grow, it's too cold, right? Uh, maybe just outside areas. So we don't not always trapped in the inside. Something like that. Maybe some platforms here, right? We could try to put those, you know, those sand gardens that they have in Japan, but maybe we mess with it a little bit so it's not sand. Okay, there's that. Okay, now on the outside of these areas, let me move this out of the way a little bit so it doesn't get so confusing. Look at these sketches, they're horrible. They're just like for yourself, right? They're, that's the whole point. It's like, don't get bogged down at this point trying to draw these beautiful sketches. Figure stuff out, okay? Let me take this one and add in that little tower that we have from our first reference, which is here, okay? So notice I found another reference over here, these kind of a Japanese bells. I thought, hey, this gun tower looks kind of like this bow thing. Why don't we use the motif from here since that is Japanese and we kind of merge it with this tower here. You know, they kind of have a similar silhouette. So where are we putting those? Well, they're gonna be lookout towers up here. Bonk. Let's put them over here, okay? Now I'm gonna remove those little canyon slots where they put the machine guns, right? These little little holes. Uh, maybe just have few just to look out, right? It's really cold out there, so they're gonna be keeping this uh, pretty protected here. And we're gonna put some of this artistic motif on top. Boink. Little windows. And to get up there, we're gonna have to cover them, right? Because it's cold. Okay, and that's gonna go into here. Boom, okay. That's starting to give us a pretty good picture of what's happening here. Now, I could also, as I draw this, explore, it's possible for them to have this stacked. So it's not just a single layer, but a multiple layer which could look pretty cool. Let's see, let's explore that a little bit. So this could be like this. It's almost like a conveyor belts or something in the airport, right? So you got multi multiple floors. And let me hijack some of these buildings when we're here. So you're just trying to figure stuff out. So I'm doing this all in real time for you guys. I didn't figure this out before. So I'm actually, you're seeing me trying to solve the design as we go here. Okay, so these guys will maybe go here. I need some front views, these guys. Okay, we're putting these inside here. Let's, oh, make these smaller. Dude. Hopefully this is also, good, also giving those uh, who are students a chance to see like design is not easy, especially if you want something that is a little bit deeper than a simple visual thing, right? You have to spend time and this thing, even for pros, it's not, it doesn't come easy. If it was that easy, this business would be pretty, uh, you know, pretty easy to get into if it was that simple. So, all right. Hopefully you guys don't hear too much of that drill sound in the back there. Okay, so it'll be something like this. I'm liking where this is going. So with that, I can now explore a little bit of these things in perspective. So let me open another one here. Let's put this on, uh, on the same kind of paper or dimensions as the reference images, which is an A3. So let's move this over. So first, let me uh, make this not a completely bright background. 
take this merge all that and throw this over here okay shrink the tent, this down a bit okay so having this we can now explore this in let me move this over a little bit so i still make my notes so i could kind of clearly see what's happening just in case i could call it away in a phone call or a meeting i could come back and see where i drop left off because sometimes um, you, you run to a meeting and that takes the rest of your day and you sort of forgot what the heck you were working on um, so it's a good idea to keep your notes even though messy still somewhat organized okay so here's that now let's explore this in perspective okay there goes the drilling again I'm going to do a simple two-point perspective. And even this, you don't have to draw it nice. This is, again, still for figuring stuff out. Okay, so here's the roof. This is the walkway. Something like this. Okay, let's make it so it could go at an angle as well. Something to that degree, and then we connect back at another one here. So this one's at a lower elevation. Just trying to figure this stuff out. So these guys, I guess they won't have horses or anything. So just they're just living here. Well, we could expand on that later as we uh, as we draw and sketch this stuff out. Okay, take small steps, baby steps. Don't get ahead of yourself. Figure things out because this will lead to fun things you know as a designer this is the kind of stuff that i enjoy the most actually is the rough rough sketches and idea generation in fact once you become an art director this is pretty much all you do um, but that's why it's fun so we have this okay so these things are going to connect to homes on the sides here so i could get a little bit of reference to draw it sort of correct we're not even dealing with interiors yet, so I don't even need this page. Uh, I need this page. Okay, let's look for a slightly older drawing. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I think this one's fine. Okay, where are we? Where's my sketch? Oh, this is the old one, right? This is my new one. Correct. Okay, let me close this one. I don't need that no more. Okay. So I'm going to have these buildings here. Boom. Don't have to draw it nice just to get the overall idea down. Okay, boom. We'll still keep all the architecture. The slanted roof still still makes sense. Uh, we have snow coverage, so uh, these roofs are still going to be at an angle to get the snow off of them. So, and again, it's not going to make 100% sense. Like I said, if this is for reals, they won't even live here. Nobody's going to try to build things into a canyon. Uh, that's just not smart. But this is to create a a world that's fun you know we're trying to do entertainment here okay do, 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 do. okay so we're gonna have that these are gonna be on stilts put another one over here let's go to this reference oh what's going on zoom out okay Ooh, i thought my computer got uh, frozen there for a second okay we don't have to put these on 90 degrees either we could put things slightly off 90 So something like that. Okay, this is so far, I'm liking where this is going. Right now, I haven't done any shot designs. I'm just figuring out the design. Okay, shot design meaning that we're gonna put this in a film ratio or a 16 by nine and start to get a composition going. Right now, I don't care about any of that because it's all about figuring out the idea first. Okay, don't add difficulty at this point. I wanna keep this simple as possible. So it's like a bunch of snakes going in and out of this canyon another building over here boink all right put that in there and this is starting to starting to feel pretty good all right we're just solving one problem at a time okay we we'll do the details, interiors, and uh, how do they get water and all that kind of stuff. Maybe we we'll could do that later, right? For now, let's just solve the bigger visuals, okay? Now, they could have some exposed staircase, I guess, right? Like, they don't have to be covered all the time. So maybe in certain areas, especially areas that's connected to a rock, say there's a rock base, maybe they could have some exposed staircase. Let me get my reference for that. 
can always use references if this, this stuff exists use it oh look at this one this one's nice but to draw this kind of a slight curvature is pretty hard uh, but we could put some of it in there i guess uh, this looks really nice and i think the silhouette let's study this real quick see the silhouette is better than what i've been drawing okay this silhouette is let's just figure it out real quick let me just go to a thinner pin it's a very flat roof the wall is about like this right i'm just doing a cross section here and then these wood uh, support beams come out actually about 50 percent of the roof check that out right so this is the half of it it's almost at a 50 percent uh length when the beams actually come out that creates a very beautiful silhouette but it's not consistent here over here you can see this comes out about a quarter or so or a third yeah, about a third right so that's the dividing line but notice this roof the slant of it is actually very minimum it's almost uh, almost a 10 degree maybe angle right, i'm talking about this angle here this angle here so i've been drawing mine a little bit too slanted i think this has a cool look oh i just noticed something else too check out the offset right here that is a pretty cool detail okay we have an offset here whereas this one this reference no offset it's a beautifully built rooftop very nice slick line here it's also using tiles as you can see here right these are these are uh probably porcelain or something like that right pretty expensive stuff here this one's much cheaper this is using uh some tiles on the top here and then this looks like um, what do you call these things they used to do a lot of roofs but uh, much cheaper material than all tiles and i like this offset that's cool that's going to give us a little bit of harsher design element right we're in the snow here uh so let's see if i could bring that in there but uh, what's i looking at oh staircases okay so let's take a look at these i like the small ones here that's pretty good okay let's go back here Ooh, observation deck i knew i put that in there for a reason this is actually pretty cool let's see if we can add that somewhere like these open areas has a roof on top but it's kind of like a balcony design and we'll see if we can add that in here somewhere okay i think it's time to start another sheet of drawing let's merge this let's make this slightly darker okay let's do another paper okay paper is free in photoshop so just draw as much as you can okay before i do that let me pause this episode i can save that as a chunk and come back to it all right that's saved let's continue so uh let's hide this layer and continue drawing here so now now have the overall design sort of figure out let's step back a bit and just take a look at it let's see all right i'm liking where this is going now let's start exploring let's start to explore the details of it okay so let's put these references out here i'm gonna need uh, that i'm gonna need this okay this is where our second screen becomes uh, very useful uh, but we'll put up with a handicap for now okay drawing here okay so now i'm gonna start drawing in perspective still not a good sketch or anything again the, this whole episode we're drawing these things for ourselves here uh, we don't need to make these all fancy and correct or anything it's just to figure out stuff okay so using the previous sketch i have let's take a quick review let's start drawing this in uh i still want to do a better plan drawing though let me see here let me see here okay let's do a a more detailed plan view Okay, what I mean by that is top down. And now I'm gonna start figuring out the placement of objects. And you'll see why I need this. I'm gonna need this drawing because I wanna use this to create where my camera is gonna be placed when I start to draw these in compositions. Okay. So let's put that. Remember the offset we talked about? We're gonna put some offsets in some of these roofs. I'm gonna use the the support beam that comes out a little bit further than the previous one so they're going to be like this we're going to take our time and draw this with a little bit more detail than previous one so we can start figuring out the spacing of things okay so they have these little support beams coming out this is shape shaking my table like crazy as i draw this okay i'm looking at this over here okay center line Oop, let's do this like this center line Keep in mind, we're gonna copy and paste this. So all I gotta do is draw this nicely. We gotta figure out what, how do they turn the corners here? How do they do it here? Looks like they kind of just jam one roof under another one. I guess we'll do it for us as well. So they just jam it like this, okay? Versus building like a nice corner. So of course we'll solve that later when we draw the actual detail part of it. Okay, so something like to this degree. To that. 
Might look like nothing, but this is this is your brain on paper here. You're trying to figure things out. All right. And the thing is, you got to draw through these problems, you know. Uh, part of the talk I'll be mentioning in Paris is about getting into design blocks where you're not, you're not doing anything creative. You're just kind of twirling lines on paper and think, oh, this sucks and this sucks. I'm getting nowhere with this. While using this method, it forces you to go forward. You're just solving problems. You're not dependent on pure visuals to come up with something cool. It's very easy to get stuck that way because you're kind of just exploring shapes until you find something nice. You're almost like experimenting the whole time until you find something nice. This way, we're just using logical things. Using references and just keep drawing, keep pushing forward. And you work your way out of bad drawings. You work your way out of bad designs, but you keep going forward. And that's what I'm doing here, right? So I'm going to copy and paste this guy. Hmm? Copy and paste. And trying to see, okay, what can we do with this guy? So maybe this guy connects to, to here. So it's like something like this, maybe like this. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Let's place that here. So okay. merge those. Okay, I'm gonna need some buildings here. So let's draw these also slightly more detailed. So at least we have some uh, space, spatial awareness of how big these buildings, the space they take up. So I think this guy's gonna take up a little bit more space than that. Maybe this big. Okay, let's put a little person in here. So that little dot is gonna represent a person. So let's look at a hallway. I have references of those down here. All right. So they're about uh, six, seven meters wide, somewhere around there. Uh, so I think this, this is pretty good. So let's put a little few dots so we are aware of people. So therefore, this building, this is about right for a small little house. And we'll draw like a bigger one. Okay, same design. Let's take a look at our reference. The, where, where, where am I? Okay, I need this. Let's use let's use these ones here. That's more house like. Doink 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 don't 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 don't. Okay, something like this. Okay, sometimes they have these little roofs on the sides here that looks out, or little uh, covered areas. Okay, so they're connected internally like this, and let's connect a few more. Let's put another one here. So that way we could copy and paste these I'm not sure about having a, a balcony around them but let's add just some elements maybe these are for supports so there are support beams underneath these guys okay. you can see this stuff the time is just flying as we do this this process usually takes like a good half a day or so to solve a big design issues and this is what we do in the real job sometimes uh, if we're just doing a spiky tower in the middle of nowhere you don't actually even sometimes go through this process you just create it as you go. You start with the canvas, just start to paint away and kind of figure stuff out because you don't have to get deeper into a design uh, solution. You know? You're just drawing something visual. For something like this, it takes some time, you know, a day, two days maybe at most that you need to do this with. Okay. Actually looking at this, these homes are huge. If I look, see, that's why adding a little dot helps. This is a massive home. So if you're in a pretty harsh environment, I don't think they'll build it that big. And the reason why I'm doing this in plan view is I can figure out the width of things, right? So I'm looking at the width of this here versus the width of this and this. So when I draw these things in perspective, I could keep the proportions in check. Okay, so let's take these guys here and let's copy a few more. Let's put one like in this area here. Now here's where drawing sketches really starts to come in to help you figure out this design issue. Looking at this plan view, I already noticed the issue. The issue being, if I want this thing to have a visual or like a silhouette of a bunch of snakes going through a canyon, if I put too many of these homes like this, it kind of destroys that silhouette. What I'm actually after is this. Okay, I'm after something like this, where from a from a top view, you can see the canyon. It's just a bunch of little things like this. But if I start messing around and putting these big buildings, you see that my buildings are now starting to eat up that silhouette. So that's going to cause an issue. So let me try to think how to solve that. One way is to reduce the these buildings so they're not creating massive silhouettes. And we actually make them smaller. 
Another way is to simply make these guys wider. That means make the people smaller. Okay. Come on, let me delete that. Okay, which is like make a person this big. So these hallways are much wider. So they start to maybe live halfway into the hallways. Okay. Again, I'm trying to figure this out as I as I go here. So I think this way we could preserve the building and make them much smaller like this. Or preserve the silhouette, I mean. And we could still have a few that's maybe like offset, but we maintain the snake vibe as you can see here. See the previous one just wasn't looking good. It's starting to look like it's starting to look like those those uh, what do you call those things? You know, you go to uh, Mount Maldives and stuff. Uh, they look like those homes are out in the ocean. Okay, yeah, it's just kind of similar. If you think about it, it's kind of similar. They have these walkways and they have homes on top, right? The reason why right now it looks like those vacation places because I only have one house. I think as I start messing with this, it'll start looking more. Um, but it does look like a plan view for a for a uh, tropical resort on the ocean. Okay, but it doesn't matter. That's fine. That's that's all functional too, actually. Okay, so we have that. This is helping. So now let's try to figure out what. What the heck does a canyon go? So we're built into a canyon. Let's draw the canyon. Bear with me, guys. This is what design is all about. Trying to figure things out. Okay. Why is my color no longer slightly red? Okay, that's good. Let's do this. Raw canyon. There's some uh, workers outside. They're installing lights. Okay. That's a canyon opening, maybe. This part it goes in another direction, right? I want this these things to be crisscrossing and snaking all through the canyons here. Something like that. Oh, there goes a drill. Hopefully it's not too loud. Okay. So these are my rocks. Let's do some elevation lines so we kind of see where things are. That that's a canyon line. This is this. There's another rock formation here. Then we could continue. For example, this beam here. I'll go that way. And this one could actually let's make it bigger here. You guys are probably watching going, wow, this is a very different design cinema. Usually we're trying to make something nice, but this episode is all about sketching and finding ideas. Okay. I think this is going to be helpful. This is going to be helpful for those who are learning to see a little bit of, uh, you know, this stuff is not that easy to find out there sometimes. The, the behind the scenes, the, the stuff that's not pretty, you know, the things pros do in their heads, you know, just not seeing it. All you're seeing are the final results on, on websites. You're like, wow, I want to make that. But maybe not aware of how much work it actually goes inside doing something like this. Okay. All right. So this tunnel will go that way. Okay, this is starting to work. I'm starting to like where this is happening. I'm still keeping a nice silhouette. This goes that away. Okay, so because remember those watchtowers we wanted, so we could place a few of those. For example, here's the round one here. And then that is gonna need a staircase. Maybe going up to the tower, it's exposed. And then it goes into a cover one here. Do -do -do something like that so there's one let's put another tower maybe in the highest position so there's another one here and this guy also comes in through stairs what you hear in the background is drills okay and then we connect that to a, maybe a little bridge and that guy gets back into a covered area here okay so these are little watchtowers on the outside and maybe one more here. This all makes sense in a second. You're like, man, why are you drawing so many of these plan drawings? It's not anything you need for the finals. It's, it's correct, but this is the process it's gonna take for us to get to the final. Okay, so that connects to there. Let's take a look. Okay, I'm gonna cover these or put a little bit of value into these. Let's put this on multiply. So we can sort of see where things are. So I'm gonna choose like a light gray. Let's just shade this in a little bit. Let's delete the parts I don't want. This is just to make it visually easier to see things. Okay, something like that. And I'm gonna delete out where the buildings are. 
kind of like when you go buy a house or something or rent an apartment and you see the plan drawing same same kind of thing here just to make it a little bit easier to see the silhouette against the empty negative spaces okay and you, you might be thinking why do all this right this is this, this is boring this is not i want to do cool concept art but uh, unfortunately this is how things get done like I mentioned earlier, this stuff is easy and you can just come up with cool concept about on the fly and you have no experience, right? Again, for experienced people, they could they could actually do that. They could uh, sit down and just generate cool concept art. But if you're learning, you got to slow this stuff down and do it the right way, okay? Solve the design issues, figure out what you're trying to do, put things on paper, sketch it out, write it down, talk yourself into or out of designs. These are all the things we all went through. You cannot look at a pro with 20 years experience and try to do what they could do in the same amount of time. It doesn't work that way in any business, you know. And most pros, because they're so good at it, they that process you don't see, right? Kind of like, um, you know, look at a, a you take anything, a basketball player, a, uh, a boxer, you know, uh, a wingsuit diver off of a cliff. They make it look easy because they're hiding the years of practice they went through doing that. So by the time you see it, like, oh, that looks pretty easy. Let me try it. And then you find, oh, this is actually really, really hard. Uh, so we've got to start with baby steps. And uh, this episode, and 95, 96, and so forth, hopefully we'll be doing a bunch of these things. And it's kind of fun for me as well. I don't get to do this often nowadays. Uh, you know, get to design things and draw things. Now it's always in meetings. You know, the more you spend this business, the more you start just being inside meetings all the time. Okay. So that's the silhouette I want to capture. Now, remember I said we're going to get to the point. Why do all this? This is going to help us figure out some camera positions. Uh, assuming we're happy. Now, in a real thing or you know, in a job situation, we could probably do this for, for the rest of the day. But uh, that's more real, I guess. But I don't think this episode could go through eight hours. You guys would probably be bored. So let's lock this design down. Let's just say this is the one we're going to go for. I like it. I think it's okay. Now I'm going to draw cameras on top. And this is going to help me figure out my compositions. So let's just put the camera in there. So I'm going to draw a camera. Doop. Okay, here's my little camera. Let's draw a uh, sort of the uh, the field of view. This is not accurate. This is not accurate at all. This is just going to allow me to place and play with cameras. Okay, so there's my little camera. And let's see, like, what's going to give me a nice composition? Remember the one, two, three rule that I've done many in the past, which is something in the foreground, your selling point, and then the background. So, for example, if I pl place my camera here, I have this little tower as my foreground, but I'll be looking down because remember these towers are above uh, the uh, the cliffs, the canyons. So that that's a possibility. This will give us a down shot, um, but not the most ideal. If I was to do, for example, from here, this is a better shot. Sort of having a tower to the left and we're looking into the valley. Okay, that's a possibility. We could also flip this and get it from this angle. Take a shot from here. Looking possibly this way, let's see. This is not too bad. We don't want this tower to be the main selling point, right? We're selling the uh, the snaking of the thing. Okay, that's another one. We could also place a camera directly inside this area. So, for example, we're walking along this path and we're looking this way. Okay, so let me just mark these real quick. So that's camera one. Let's call this camera two. And we'll call this camera three. Okay, so those are positions I can start drawing some rough sketches around to see what the compositions could possibly look like. Now, I'm not locked to these. I could change my mind as we sketch, but this gives me a start. Again, the whole point is to keep going forward, to have something to draw versus getting stuck and trying to just doodle random lines on paper. This gives me a, a goal to reach, and that goal is not locked. I'm doing this for myself. You know, this is my own design. I don't have to be like, oh, this camera I chose, I have to draw exactly what I see in camera, uh, but it gives me a start. Okay, so let's go back to uh, this here. And now I'm going to start drawing some camera angles. So I'm going to give myself sort of a, a film ratio here. Okay, let me copy this a few times. This is where I'm trying to figure out the actual shot I'll be doing in episode 95, the next one. Okay, so these are my little borders. And let's just draw right into them. Okay, let's do camera one, camera two. Let's go to a thicker pen here, camera three. Okay. So where's my camera one? Camera one, I'm looking down. Okay, so first thing to do, I'm gonna put a slight wide angle lens on this guy. 
and I'll be looking at a tower to my left. Okay. I'm going to use very simple blocks to, to figure this stuff out. I'm not even going to put good perspective on it. I mean, not perspective, uh, uh, the actual rounded form. Okay. Start simple. Okay, this cliff is going to go and go this way. This might be too big. Maybe I'll shrink this down to here. Okay. This is going to be my foreground, not necessarily my selling point, just my foreground. So now I'm going to put my that bell shape in there. Okay. Okay, let's keep going here. So that's going to go and go down this way. He has little staircases, which is really cool to work out. Okay. Keep it rough, keep it rough. Don't get locked down this early. We have this walkway generally about here. Okay, let's draw some other perspective lines in here. And yes, you could go into 3D maybe to mock this up, but I think that's too early to do that right now. Let's just figure out the overall design first before we get too ahead of ourselves. This is going to help us solve all sorts of issues. Okay, so we have a walkway there, right? Again, I'm looking at camera one, the one over here, okay? So we have that. This perspective is kind of off. Let's do that. And right here, we have a small building. That's going to go somewhere around here. Do, do. This is a walkway, so that's going to give us a design solution of how these outside walkways connect to the inside. Looking at that, I can now move this guy over more and give us some breathing room. I can also probably move it to the top. Okay, I'm gonna put a horizon in here actually. I think I'm gonna put my horizon line just around here somewhere. I have this thing cut the horizon. Am I drawing on the actual thing? That no, doesn't matter. Okay, keep it rough, doesn't matter. Okay, that is gonna to connect to another one that's gonna come at an angle. I'm gonna draw my sketch so it's at a 90 degree. It makes it easier. Uh, maybe not, let me see. We don't have to, okay, keep it offset. Okay, there's a building here. Okay, that's gonna go right about here. There's another building over here. Do, do, do. These are the walkways. And take your time with this stuff, figure it out. Do, 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 do. This is going to go like this. Have some offsets in there. Remember the offset from earlier? That was pretty cool. Okay, that's that. This is a walkway right here. There's actually homes right in front of the camera here. We just get the edge of one. You can actually see in the uh, little sketch there. We cap catch the edge of one of these buildings. So we'll put that right about here. That's going to help sell that. Now, another one on the other side. Okay. The only problem I see with this right now is that it doesn't show that we're in a canyon. So we're gonna have to pull back the camera a little bit more, but let's keep drawing here. There, okay. So we gotta show that we're in a canyon somehow. Let's put some rock, right? There's a rock face right about here. We have a lot more homes in this area. Just gonna twist into that. And that's going to go into a canyon there, which is pretty cool. That's going to give us a canyon effect right about here and right about here. And we can see rest of the buildings in the back. Okay, we're on stilts. So I'm going to put the camera back slightly. That means opening up the field of view. Okay, so I'm going to open it up just a little bit more. The reason why I want to do that is to give myself the space to show the stilts going deep down into the canyons. Okay, so here I can make a design decision. Right now I have a watchtower somewhere around here. So let's open this up like this and then put it more, maybe more rocks here. So it's, the watchtower is sort of uh, in the middle of a rock here. That's gonna go like that and it's gonna create another canyon right about here. Okay, our little watchtowers, dude, dude. Rocks. Okay, boom, 
Boom, boom, boom. I'm not worried about cleaning things up. I'm just trying to figure things out. I think I said it about a million times right now. It's important. This is something I want to get across in this, in this episode is sketch, draw, figure things out. Don't get locked down to something so final, so early. Okay. Decrease the things that's going to stress you out, like drawing quality and perspective and all that. Right? Decrease those things. So you focus purely on just figuring it out. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, I'm liking this so far. It's starting to get the snake vibe that I was sort of looking for. This here is a cover walkway. So I'm not solving design issues in terms of details yet. I'm only solving the major forms because all these buildings and things we have references for, right? We solve those later. Uh, when we actually draw them nice in episode 95 and then we'll probably go to 3d after that uh, and that's going to give us all the freebie details and correct our perspective especially now if, if you know you're going to work off of 3d the 3d is going to solve all the fundamental issues for you right so that's where we don't have to focus too much on making these nice anymore because our final presentation is going to have a 3d behind it so therefore i don't really have to worry about drawing a nice for now i use 3d to solve that for me okay so therefore, put your effort in the design and the shot design. That's something the 3D is not going to help you, right? Like something like this, where things are not 90 degrees, it's actually very hard to do that in 3D if you don't plan it ahead of time, because 3D tends to make things stiff. It tends to make things in 90 degrees, right? It puts everything perfectly. So if you want something a little bit more organic like this, it's good to just kind of solve it be before you get into doing things in 3D. Okay. So seeing this, now I can add another layer on the bottom. Okay, something I mentioned earlier is that this doesn't have to just be a single stack, right? We can stack down here as well. The one thing I don't like about this so far is that I don't see a far away shot. We don't see the background. So I'm going to open up this here. I'm going to make this tower a little bit smaller, maybe like this. Okay. And what that's going to do is it allows me to open up this area, this upper left here, to give me a far away shot so I could get a nice background out of this. Okay, remember mid-ground, foreground, background, right? So here I could then establish what kind of environment I'm actually in, which is some snowy mountain type of thing, right? Really far away, many, many kilometers away. Okay. And that sets up my, my background there. And I'm gonna use a canyon to just cut off that, break that silhouette. All right, so I can still get my spiky mountains in there, right? I could get my tower, I could put a tower like, boop, right there. Still getting my little towers in. Let's put another one. Bloop. Okay, and then the rest of the community all over there. So that's cool. That's my camp one. Sort of works. I don't hate it. I think it's okay. It sells my concept that I want to get across. And the camera and composition is okay. Okay, let's try this at camp two. Uh, which is now on the ground so let's continue here uh okay so camera two is here so i'm gonna have a perspective that goes straight ahead looking at this as it twists away into here and let's just do some basic calculations here and we have that okay so we have canyon to the left i mean to the right and canyon to the left so we're in the middle so we're gonna have to start the shot in the canyon so i'm gonna set up a one point perspective first that's gonna see directly ahead into ba -ba 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 -ba, into my little where tower number three, I guess, will be at. Okay, so let's do that. Let's set that up. So horizon line, I'm gonna set the horizon low because now we're in the canyon, we're gonna be looking up. So let's put a one point right there and do a very basic perspective first to get that started. Let's hope my recording software don't crash because <laughs> I'm trying to do this in one pass. Okay, so ba, 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 right there. Okay, so we have a now keep in mind this this walkway We're not in it. We have to be sort of above it. Although let me think let me think let me think how to do this Okay, let's just figure out the cannon first. So we have a cannon on the side We have a cannon on this side so Let's drop that in Let's use geometry to get our first rooftop in and then we have actually two buildings that's slightly on an angle to us. 
uh, horizon lines, mark horizon. This is our horizon line. Let's not forget that. That's our H line there. So that means these lines are converging. But again, don't have to make it nice. Just kind of okay is good enough. Because right now I don't want to be bogged down by anything that's getting my way of planning these designs out. Okay, so these are the top of the uh, walkways. Eventually we'll do interiors. Right now I'm only doing exteriors. I think, let me see how long this episode is when I do my next pause. Uh, I might be able to fit an exterior or interior into these shots as well. That's gonna explain the walkway relationship and the house relationship. Okay, so seeing this angle, you see it's not helping. It's not the best angle. Even drawing this right now is not helping, but I can make it sort of work by twisting these hallways or this, this area here. I could, in this view, I can make this not at the same ground level. That could help me sell it. For example, I could be up here. This could come down at an angle, although it can't be that steep, right? Let's figure this out, let's figure this out. If we make this at an angle, then I could sell this. And this is where shot design becomes so important of trying to sell your design and still make it work. So this will connect to some kind of home here. All right. So I'm essentially taking this chunk here and making it at an angle versus being straight and parallel because in my camera angle, we can't see it. And that's not good to, to sell the design. So these buildings will be up here. Okay, and then we see the stilts, which is kind of cool. Let's put another perspective in here. Let's put a two point in this area. Okay, so we've got these homes up there and they're on stilts as well. This is kind of cool. It helps me to sell the stilts that they're on. This will be here. Okay, this goes in the background. So we can make the other ones also be on a slight angle towards things. Okay, then we have the rock directly in front of us, we have a cannon. So we can make this cannon about this high. These guys are all in a cannon as well. And they tend to go in the background. We can make this area pretty narrow, like so. These homes go inside there. So you can see in this camera angle, we're not selling too many of the homes, but we could, we could, fi we could fix that, we'll fix that. Okay, we'll put the low tower over here. Remember, this perspective is looking directly at that at that low tower. Not this big, maybe this. And then that mount is gonna run that away. Okay, and this area here, I opened up for us to see the background. Okay, we have another tower here, so we could place it right about this position, right about here. Okay, that's my foreground tower. And that also shows off the staircase of how this guy goes in and up and down this uh, uncovered area. And that connects back to here. So this overall still works. I don't mind this composition right now. The only thing I don't like is that it doesn't show our architecture of the homes that well. Okay, I can put a few more twisty walkways in the back. So to solve that, if you want to stick to this camera angle, okay, let's put the background in first. So we've got some snowy mountains in the back. All right, something like that, pretty, pretty far away stuff. Okay, to solve this issue, I could put a home around here. Bigger in the camera than previous one. Okay, that could help us solve this issue here, break the silhouette. Because I still have the stilts showing going to the ground on my right side. Although I could also punch this camera out just a little bit like this. Push everything to the left slightly. That way I can open up these stilts to get the canyon effect. So I can have this canyon line run all the way down and run here. Have this canyon line run all the way here and go here. And use that empty space to show that we're very high up. Something I want to get across. Then let's put another home right about here. The only thing about this is that it would be really nice if we could actually see into the walkway, but if we go into the walkway, it becomes the interior in this case. We don't see it. So let's let's stay with that for now. I think this is okay as a shot. 
Okay, this is my shot number two. Okay, now let's do shot number three, which is kind of confusing because we're like upside down. Uh, so let's merge this and uh, to make it easier, let me save this real quick. Let's just uh, copy and paste this guy here and uh, just reverse it. And just see what we see. Okay, we're somewhere right here. So we're doing camera number three, which is this one over here. So this one, we're also looking down. Okay, let's continue here. Mark this one, camera two, and right now we're on camera three. Okay, looking down once again. I think ended up looking down is probably the easiest way to sell these. Okay, so now my tower, well, obviously I don't want it in the middle. Let's move it also to the left. Put it about this position. Put our horizon somewhere around here. And let's put in a two point for this one. Okay, that's my perspective grid. Mark my horizon, the thicker line. So I'm gonna be coming off of a canyon. Okay, I'm looking at that shot there. Step back here and figure this out. Okay, we have a couple homes right about this position. So let's hold those positions in. Boink. No idea how long this episode is going to be. It's like two hours or something, I think. But it's good. This is uh, this is how it works. So okay, so we've got a home here, and we have uh, them connecting to a walkway that's going to go this way. And we have an opposite home going there. Okay, and these homes have other ones attached to it. About here. Crappy perspective, it doesn't matter. Okay. I have this one go into perspective this way. Put these on stills. I think it's too too thick these buildings. Make it like that. Okay, there, and then come around this way, and then we have some buildings. Let's drop these buildings on a lower platform. Put it around here somewhere. Okay, that means my tower, I have to move all this and drop it a little bit. Oops, what did I do? Okay, let's put this here. This way allows me to put my tower still above at a halfway point, so let's put a cannon here. That way I can put my tower just about here. Let me see, I don't wanna cut off this building here. I can move them though. Move them to about here, Wah, come on. Whoops, I wanna move you here, okay. Then I can put my little tower about this position, doesn't block the view, and I still let this little walkway continue through okay and this is where composition becomes really important to balance so you can see here i'm using this little tower to cut my walkway so i get more depth whatever this design is okay and it still doesn't block this building which gives you again more perspective and depth okay and that's works so this little tower is there uh, okay let's take a look so let's build these out whoops wrong button the uh, which we call the computer is slowing down right now because I think it's recording for like 40 minutes without break, so it's uh, the RAM is starting to get eaten up. Okay, put this here. But almost done with this one. Then I could take a pause and see how much time we have spent in total, and see if I, we have time for do a, a at least one or two interiors. Okay, these are stilts. Okay, homes there, and then we have a cannon looking at here about here. This shot is looking pretty good. Okay, we have a tower up here as well. Bloop. That's there. So see, we get spiky mountains and towers in this shot as well. So we can still satisfy the, the tower spiky mountain thing that's fun to draw, but just giving us a little bit of a design within that. Okay, so we could put some of these actually on the outside, right? We have a walkway over here. We can make this go up a bit and kind of go into perspective. Okay, and we have a rock canyon right about here. Boom. Okay, make that go down. And that's going to be like going to perspective. We can actually put a perspective here. 
horizons here, let's just drop a vanishing point. So this area here gets almost like a Grand Canyon effect. So these things go really far into the distance. Okay. And then we'll use this left area to sell the distance mountains. You know, kind of like Misty Mountains from Lord of the Rings, that type of mountains. All right, way back here. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Let's not go too crazy with that. Okay. All right. And these are all homes. This is looking good. I like, I like shot number three right now. I like where it's going. It represents everything I want to sell. And compositionally, it feels a little bit better than camera number one. But we're going to have to take a look. It's... Uh, this all comes down to zoom in out in a second here to see what we have. Okay. I like this. I like where this is going. Is it still recording? Okay, good. What if he crashed? Okay. I like that. Okay, so that's camera number three. Let's box that in. Boom, boom, boom. So now let's take a look at all three shots. Let me just silhouette these a little bit stronger here so we can see clearly what my structures are. At this point, I really don't care about line weight and none of that kind of stuff. It's just purely for myself. If I can't see something clear, I'd mark it stronger. This would not be like a sketch way of doing line weight, right? Making some of the stuff really heavy. This is just for yourself, okay? I have a tower over here. That tower should be far away. Bloop. Okay, there's a tower here. I'm to it. Oh, it's here. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, we could continue the mountain. There's another, again, so we could use this big mountain here or a rock to continue the silhouette of this mountain. So if it goes this way, it's like, do, 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 do. it's somewhere like over here. Mm. All right, something like that. Okay, to make this stuff easier, I like to sometimes drop like a sky back there. So that way we can see what's a sky, what's ground. So let's do that real quick. Uh, I'm just gonna block all these guys out and putting a gray background. Doesn't be this heavy. Whoa, what did I do here? Did I make too many of it? Let me undo that. New layer. Doink. Okay, that's what I wanted. Delete that. Delete that. And on top of that, I'm just going to fill in just sky is blue. So let's just use blue. You know, let's keep it really, really easy to see things. Here we go. So I have sky in this position because that's going to give me sort of a horizon mark where things are. Right? And we have sky in this area. Bloop, bloop, and it's gonna go down to about there. Okay, we have sky here. Bloop, and we have sky here. That's gonna allow me to see how much breathing room do I have in this painting, right? If I fill it all with content, it might be too heavy. So I could pull over sky there, for example, to open that up. Maybe even there, we'll see. Maybe not, okay. This one, sky here, and sky here. Here. See, like now that's pretty claustrophobic. I think I need to open it up like to be like that. Okay, that's that's not bad. So then we could correct this here. Switch back to my heavier pen. That's kind of ugly of a cut. I mean that cuts to be over here somewhere like this. Okay, delete that. And these become our faraway mountains. So therefore Fill this into uh, what layer am I on here? Okay, that's kind of cool. That kind of works. Maybe silhouette that little tower out with the sky like this. All right, that's kind of working. I'm gonna just do another pass on it for foreground. I'm gonna put multiply and just put a little bit of value on this so I can see what's close to camera and what's far from camera. I'm gonna select this background so I don't go outside of it. Something like this, right? And also kind of lets me silhouette out some of these buildings. Uh, this stuff doesn't really have a rule to it. This is just for yourself. So I'm just doing this to make it easier for me to see things, All right? So I'm kind of putting the man-made structures a little bit darker and I'm putting objects that are foreground elements a little bit close to me as well, a little bit darker. No rule, this is for yourself. So as long as you understand it, it's all that matters. Your clients don't see this, art directors don't see this, your friends don't see this, like nobody sees it. This is just for yourself. Um, so you don't have to make it, uh, you can make whatever you want essentially. Okay. 
Now I'm looking at it, I kind of like shot number one as well. It kind of works as well. Okay, do 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 do. All right, that. And this is really how I sketch my real sketches. It's just kind of crappy like this. It's, it's not nice, you know, it's just done for yourself. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. That's the three. All right. I can even put a little bit of, uh, let's go above this. Again, not trying to make this nice, just to remind myself what the heck is going on. So um, let's put a little bit of fog in here just to break the background stuff out. There's gonna be some air in here, all right? It's pretty cold, it can be snowing and stuff. Just enough enough details for me to know what I'm doing with these pieces. Some snow, right? Okay. And we can still have people standing here looking down at the shot. We could actually use this time to position those. So for example, if you have a guard tower here, uh, whatever this design is going to be, which is going to be episode 95, we're going to have to figure these things out. Why is this so light? Okay, that's better. In 95, we have to figure all these designs out now that we have the composition. But we can use this opportunity to sort of mark where things are going to go. So there's going to be a staircase here. We could have like a couple soldiers, and they're probably not soldiers, right? Like watch guys, making sure there's no like um, avalanche or something. You know, one guy sitting over here. Then we could show off some costumes as well, like what they're wearing. Super cold fur, that type of thing, right? So guys walking over there. A uh, couple guys walking there. And then for this one, oh, same thing. We could have a, a person here. We'll figure out where it works later. Right, walking down, and this shot here, same thing. We'll use the towers as our oh, too big areas to place humans. And humans gives you a free scale. Without humans, it's hard to tell how big something is. Okay, so there's that, and then there's focus people walking around all inside there. Okay, so these are my three shots here. Let's group this before we uh, let me take a break here. Group all these guys in here. Okay, close enough. And then my two little maps out there. What is this one? Oh, that's the previous notes. So let's just scoop that in there. Okay, so you can see that's our what we started with, and this is our current work working notes. Okay, so let me take a break here and see how long this has actually taken. All right, so I took a look at the time. We're about hour and a half in, so I think I could squeeze a really quick interior shot, maybe just maybe two shots. So that way, this will end this episode nicely with the establishing shots, the three that we have here, plus one or two interiors. So that way, in episode 95, we could go in there and start drawing these out, following the composition we created today, and detail it all out. And then in episode probably 96, I think, we could probably get into 3D. So we'll take our time with this stuff. And again, Again, for the talk in Paris, I prepared a dozen of these things, ton of ideas we could run through, and hopefully that will uh, keep my whole year busy with design cinemas and something to do, so I don't have to think about like, oh man, what do I record today? You know, there's so many topics for us to do. This is pretty fun actually. I haven't done a long format recording in a long time, and this is quite entertaining for myself. So uh, let's not waste time. So let's do another one. So let's call this our exterior. I'm gonna do one that's the interior right now. So let's call it INT, and I'm gonna use the same map actually to figure out what the cameras are, just to save some time. Okay, so let's turn this off. So this guy is still on. Um, let's use, uh, let's use blue. Let's use blue. Blue for interior shot. So I only have time for two, what time is it? One fifteen. okay, so uh, let's get to like one thirty. Let's try to do this as fast as possible. So for the interior, I wanna show obviously the interior, but I also want some connections with the outside, with the hallway, for example. So a good placement of camera yeah, am i missing one more here we go this is the one i'm looking for so i want to be inside a house looking out into the hallway looking out to other homes i think that's what i want to do uh, let's figure that out okay so camera wise we could pick almost any of these homes to get that camera shot let's see here um this is good here yep camera should be in the home so for example here looking this way allows me to see maybe about here allows me to see the interior which is here see outside see the hallway and see another hallway connecting and possibly the entrance to another home so that's pretty good so that's one of my cameras i want to use i also want another camera if i'm going to do two shots of a hallway looking maybe to an open area and looking for into a home so let me see what would be a good place to do that 
This is not bad. Okay, something like this. Place this just here. So camera number two is going to catch the right side of a building, the entrance of one, the entrance to another one. And then we're going to open up one of these things to have an outside area, whatever that could be. And we're also seeing this tunnel continue and have a twist. So we know that this is not a perfect 90 degree cut. Okay, so let's establish that. So camera number one, camera number two, and let's jump in and do it. Okay, pick that. So I'm only going to do two shots because we're pressed for time here. I'm going to make this episode too long. I don't think I can do this in 15 minutes, but uh, let's see how far we get. All right, so I'm going to get those two over here. And camera one. Camera one. This is camera one. Why am I writing two in the camera two? I don't know. Okay. One camera one, two camera two. Okay, uh, camera number one. So we're in a home. Um, bah, 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 perspective. So for this shot, I think I want, I like to cap my horizon always like two thirds up on the floor for interiors. That's my personal preference. Um, and let's give ourselves, I think I have to open up the FOV on this one pretty, pretty wide. It's gonna have to be like a wide angle lens to capture what I need to capture. Not wide enough. Let's see. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, that's just my perspective. I could get a little bit of reference right now. I don't need too much of it, just enough to get my overall structure, but I could detail that next week, right? Let's hide this. Okay. Step back, just to check. Okay. So the reason I'm stepping back from camera is the same thing as zooming out, but sometimes I have to physically just step back. It's a habit I've been ha I had for a long time when doing traditional pieces where you just roll your chair back and take a look at your composition. Okay, so what I want this house to be, I think most people living here are are uh, just trying to make a living. So they're, I'm not gonna give a role to this one yet. Maybe the ne next next one, I'll make it into a middle uh, metal smith or something maybe. So for now, I wanna put a floor. Okay, a lot of beams, which are really cool. Okay, I have to open this up quite a bit for us to see out. So I need this to open. And this is where design comes in. It's like maybe in these homes, their entrances are pretty wide. It's almost like a communal living where you could walk into each other's homes. Like the homes are basically all shared maybe. So that because that's the way they live. I don't know yet. I'm just trying to figure this stuff out as I sketch. So like they could go in and out of each other's homes or something. Okay. Right now, the only thing I care about is the shot design. I don't care about details afterwards. I need to make sure. Oh, look at that. Everything is raised, which is kind of cool. I really like this interior. It's like an older Japanese home here because uh, he's got the raised floors, which is pretty cool. Okay, so this area looks out. So now I get a little bit of a rooftop. Roof top. And then that gives us the hallway interior. Oh, look at that. That's a beautiful interior right there. Where's my, where's my walkways? Okay, this one will do. So we have pillars kind of going this way. And looking at it, I don't have enough room. I'm gonna have to extend that here. Open up my door all the way to here. That way I could get this shot. This is why we keep the sketches loose and for yourself. Don't restrict yourself at this point. See, I'm just drawing right into my interior. So my hallway is like all the way over here now doesn't matter it's fine okay boom I'm not gonna hang those lanterns for now it's kind of uh, it's kind of tropish okay that that okay so I'm open by my door so maybe this interior it's almost like we're half the opening is not a standard door but it's pretty wide okay looking at this I'm gonna have to zoom everybody out a little bit as well that means open up the FOV otherwise I have no room to sell the interior so then we have an entrance to another one. This is where we could make design decisions. So right across. So these are beams. I know it's probably hard for you guys to see what's going on, but uh, I'm keep I'm tracking it in my head. I know what's going on. Okay, let's do a center beam. Boom. Okay, I love this interior right here. Let's try to get that. I love the raised floors. Where's I lost my horizon? Oh, horizon's right here. Okay, so this is below horizon. little fire pit we can put the fire pit uh let's put the fire pit right about here 
that's going to give us a light source and then we have this thingy hanging all the way from the ceiling some cooking pots that type of thing let's go here so our entrance is actually i'll mark it in heavy silhouette so i'm going to make the entrance wrong line from here we can almost study it from here right we're making it much bigger because that's a community that we're in right now it's all covered so everyone know there's almost like no outside right technically we're talking about a a full-on interior always in the in a place like this okay that's the grass i mean the glass not glass paper walls okay so all this is outside here okay so in here we're talking about the interiors here we have like a grandma right here on the well my reference okay person sitting here which we could put here as well boom so they're cooking i will do the same thing cooking okay we have doors to other rooms which is great that opens up more spaces and then we have all the interior architecture that that's going to be the fun part because all these wood beams are pretty awesome to to detail okay this almost gets my shot i like this shot it works quite well then on the outside we have some so over here maybe this is like a shop over here we could continue into its interior so this is the entrance to another area okay across from this hallway so in here we could maybe give it a profession maybe it's like a little eating area but not a, um it could be a restaurant right they, they, they gotta serve food not everyone's uh it's like a town but it's a town built between hall between all walkways so we could put like a little little bar you know kind of thing but still always this word i don't have reference for this right now i only have home references i'm kind of making this up slightly but i'll place it with correct things later And then we could see far out as well. Maybe we could open up some windows so we could see out the sky. Okay, in the hallway, which is here, I also want to make sure that I could see out just a little bit. But we're gonna make the windows a little bit smaller to make sense that they're in a cold area. Okay. What pot, all the accessories that's gonna go there. All right, anything else in the room I could kind of place? let's see reference 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 home interior home interior uh okay looks like just tables pots sitting things okay mm. boom 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 okay right now that that important i just want to eat up the space maybe i'll put a little table over here okay this one's good i like this shot quite a bit we have a beam running right through the middle I think that's kind of nice. I probably made it too crummy. Let's make it not that crummy. Whoa, why is my pencil thick? Okay, that's a beam running in the middle. Maybe we could put another beam in the background over here somewhere. Okay, this shot is good. Okay, let's do shot number two, is which is hallway now. So now we're doing a shot that's almost like, where'd it go? This one. Ah, it's almost, it's almost like this one, actually. Uh, just slightly opposite camera angle. So here, so we have a home to the right. So let's get our co uh, composition or perspective. Okay, put a one point. This one, a one point works quite well, but then we'll drop in just a slight two point here. One point and a two point, basically a multiple perspective happening here. Uh, Let's see let me make sure i get a good camera in here first okay so that's just gonna go to our one point i'm gonna shift the one point over slightly so i get this okay those are fundamentals if you know it it's gonna be helpful but in the day if you have a good design you can always do this in 3d so it doesn't matter too much okay so now i'm gonna solve the hallway issue so let's go here and find our old hallway this one works quite well that's our reference zoom out boink boink i think we're past 15 minutes already oh well it's all good okay so beam 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 okay these beams have other beams boom boom and they go to a triangular roof on top 
something like this okay and we're gonna go for quite a while because we're gonna see the perspective is sort of the point of it and then we could do the floor like so I think we made it too narrow let's widen this up a bit more, 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 like that okay see don't fall in love with perspective and stuff like that because we can make these really crappy corrections but it's fast okay so here's our remember like look at our plan here we're drawing right here okay we're doing the right side we could see some but the left side one we see more and we see the hallway go all the way down and we're looking like that okay so that's what we're trying to do so here's my right side building this building is actually is this one right here all right so it's a got a, a very wide opening this is the paper wall right here paper wall on the other side go inside we can actually open up this a little bit more so you can see the uh we'll change the design it doesn't be exactly the same one but we can see into into it and there's some some stuff going on there who knows what this does and then we're looking here so this person here is uh instead of having a restaurant maybe this is a um metal smith maybe building or clothing shop or something you know where they're building all this warm hunter and i'm just trying to think out loud what 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 is in here okay we can make it a hunter but for that i need references because i'm no i don't have any references right now of like japanese feudal period uh warm fur clothing i don't have that right now oh this line sucks let's make that nice okay let's look here it's looking pretty good i like this shot a lot and then we can make this part twist at a strange angle so we know that it's not a perfect 90 degree hallway or walkway so you can see pretty basic it's just like a basic perspective going on right here but it's so simple but it helps me solve so many issues in my in my design of what i'm trying to do here boom 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 okay i think we're pretty good with this one darken that let's frame it so i, I think uh, hopefully i did this within the last 15 or 20 minutes Oh, missed that. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna know, going to uh, put a little bit of a background on this. Okay, that's that. Multiply, just to break up the forms so I can see what's happening. And we're almost done. Okay, so kill this. Bonk. Okay, so again, I'm gonna do a darker for close-up objects. Just to oh, let's silhouette this so we don't paint outside of the mask. That's our beam, and all this essentially is our interior. And I make the exterior just a little bit brighter so you can sort of see where things are. And I'm also going to open up this area. That's going to perfect to pop my little person out for the shot. And here we do this dark interior light this dark interior light whatever it's going to be inside there All right let's ask some people here is whoops for some scale point okay I'm on the right first check now, it doesn't even matter if you're on the right layer or not. This kind of stuff is so like early rough sketch stuff that doesn't really matter. Some people having a conversation right here. This person's like looking over, maybe a sitting, who knows? And let's get some people walking in the halls. Another person walking. And we're good. Okay, I'm just going to mark a little bit of a window. I want to get some outside. Otherwise, these shots are very uh, stiff. Okay, Meaning that we have no background. Okay, we only have foreground and midground. No backgrounds. So I'm going to try to add, actually, this window could actually look outside, right? 
So I'm using that, and the hallway can have some uh, windows as well. So I'm gonna mark that just like what I did last time with some blue sky. Uh, so I'll get the color from here. Doink, come back here. What am I doing? What am I doing? Turning this one off. Okay. And putting it right in here to remind me where the outside areas are. So there's one there. Perfectly silhouette my cook. Put one there. And this one, I'm trying to open a window somewhere in here and maybe somewhere in here. So I have a little bit of an outside view. Let's mark that window in. Go this way. Boom, boom. Okay, and also give us light sources. For example, if we have uh, light here, you can actually do this watch. We can do this now. If I darken these up just a little bit, we can actually use the simple dodge brush just to give us lighting cues. Let's use yellow. This is something we'll be doing a lot more next in the next episode, which we have to figure everything out, the design as well as the lighting, right? So for example, these lights could come in and light up the hallways, that kind of thing. Same thing here, we can use that to light up the hallways. This type of stuff. Okay, but for now, it's not that important. Okay, and there's our interior. So we got everything done. We got interior, two shots, and we have exterior, three shots. We're ready to proceed to episode 95. Is it 95? Yeah, 95. Okay, so anyways, this episode ran really long, but I, I like it. I hope you guys like it as well. This helped me keep everything a lot more raw and keep the designs fresh uh, in terms of the process itself. So uh, that's it. Uh, thanks you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in episode 95 and uh, if you're in Paris I'll see you guys in two weeks in uh, in Paris. All right, this is Feng Zhu signing off. Bye-bye